hello everyone and welcome back to my channel today is going to be another tat your nails and missing persons case black and missing of course um if you haven't already make sure to subscribe and make sure you hit your notification bell so that you're notified each and every time i upload a video i have two people in this case today two separate cases but they happen in the same place and i discovered one while actually researching the other so i figure i can put them both together and as this video progresses you will see why so i'm going to talk about two missing children by the age of 16 one by the name of alan briscoe jr and one by the name of christine green both missing from uh, philadelphia pennsylvania so essentially, Christine Green went missing first in 1985, and eight months later, Alan went missing in December of 1985. But I kind of want to do this case in reverse, simply because that's kind of how I um, discovered it in reverse. I was researching Alan Briscoe Jr.'s case and stumbled across Christine's. Um, there's also more information on Alan than there is about Christine, so let's get the majority and the bulk of the case out of the way first, and then we'll add Christine on the back end, and then I'll give you my ideas, opinions, assumptions about this case. Alan Briscoe Jr., also known as Squeak or Squeaky, was born on December 5th, 1969. And he was 16 at the time of his disappearance and he disappeared in uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He is of course a black male, brown eyes. Alan has a lump on his left shoulder, a scar on his forehead. He is listed as bow leg, y'all know what that means. And one of his front teeth is chipped and or cracked at the time of his disappearance again he disappeared december 5th or sorry he disappeared december 13th 1985 his birthday is december 5th 1969 so let's just get into the nitty-gritty of this case Alan Briscoe Jr. was last seen wearing a black jacket and blue jeans on the corner of Woodland Avenue in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Every day, Alan's mother, her name is Joanne Briscoe, every day she would call them in the morning because she, so she's a single mother. And, you know, those who grew up with single parents, you know how it goes. So she had to leave work before the kids got up for school. So there's Alan and his sister, Latanya. She's 17, and at the time, Alan is 16. So their mother, Joanne, would leave in early in the morning before they got up for school. So in the middle of her shift, in the middle of her shift, um, she would call to wake the kids up for school. And this was like a, a everyday thing, you know, Monday through Friday. So on this particular day, which would be December 13th, she calls the kids to wake them up for school, but she's not receiving an answer. And it, of course, it's strange that she's not receiving an answer, but, you know, she's thinking, you know, they're 16 and 17, so, you know, they probably got themselves up. I'm not going to think too much into it. I'm just going to, you know, continue with my day. And again, this is in 1985, so I'm not sure if they had the automatic phone calls, the automated phone calls. Like, I know if my kids miss school, I get a phone call telling me that they're absent, so. But I'm not sure in 1985 that wasn't, you know, a thing. But anyway, so she calls several times and they don't answer the phone. This is at 7.30 a.m. Neither... Um, Alan or his sister Latanya answer the phone. 
but the mother just, you know, goes to work, continues on about her day. She also has a second job, so she works two jobs. She was picking up some extra hours, so she doesn't return home until 11.30 p.m. So I'll talk about a hard-working woman, but she doesn't return home until 11.30 p.m., but she calls again at 3.30, which is when the kids should normally be out of school. But she didn't get an answer then either. So 3.30 is about an hour after the kids get out of school. But she didn't get an answer either. So, like I stated, Alan's mother works two jobs. So she didn't get home until 11.30 p.m. And Alan's sister, Latanya, came home at 11 p.m. Well, it's reported that she came home... But then um, Alan wasn't home and he had the keys to the house. So she ended up going to her grandmother's house, you know, until her mother and or Alan came home. So she, the sister ends up returning home at 11 p.m. This is 17-year-old Latanya. She ends up returning home at 11 p.m. The mother comes home at 11.30. And they both discover that Alan has not been back home. Um, let me just say that. The sister never gave a statement, so we don't know if when she left that morning for school, if she saw Alan, if, you know, she didn't see him the night before, like, the sister's not talking, um, which definitely strike me as odd, but I'm not going to assume or say anything, you know, in reference to that. It just strike me as odd. I don't want to put a false narrative out. We all process our pain, our trauma, and our hurt in different ways, but she's not talking. But anyway, um, there are reports that Alan did attend school. However, school let out early that day. So he and a friend, this is all witness reports from said friend, and I couldn't find his name anywhere, but he said that they rode the subway around for the majority of the day. So, you know, whatever 16-year-olds do. But they were riding the subway around for the majority of the day. And um, by the end of the day, he decided to... They ended up catching... His records indicate that Alan was in school that day. Even though his mother feels as though he did not attend school that day, but... Police records indicate that he was, and again, I said after they, after he left school, he and a friend just rode the Philadelphia subway for the majority of the day. Up catching the city bus, like the city transportation. I don't know what it's called for Philadelphia, but if I find it out, I'll put it on the screen. But um, if I remember to look it up, but they ended up catching the city bus back home to their neighborhood. So Alan gets off the bus on Woodland Avenue which he told the friend like i'm about to go see my female friend so you know he's 16 like i'm about to go see this chick um it's unknown whether or not he stated what the girl's name was or anything and the friend's name has not been released either i couldn't find that anywhere so his last reported sighting is getting off on the corner of Woodland Avenue, getting off the city bus on Woodland Avenue. And he was never seen or heard from again. As I stated, Alan and his friend just rode around the subway and then they rode the neighborhood bus home. And he is last seen and reported to be seen on getting off the bus at Woodland Avenue. And as I stated, that is his last reported sighting to be confirmed. And he was never seen or heard from again. So surprisingly, authorities do not believe that Alan is a runaway. Um, I was actually pleasantly surprised to hear that because you know how it goes. But he didn't take any of his belongings with him and... You know, he even left money behind. He had gotten some money for his birthday. Um, $50 from his mother for his birthday. And he ended up um, leaving that behind as well. So he didn't take any of his 
clothing with him, no personal items or anything like that. So, you know, typically if you're going to run away, you know, you would take some things with you, but nothing is missing. Nothing of his is missing. So it's reported that he didn't take anything with him. So authorities have not listed him as a runaway, which I'm actually thankful for because, you know, these cases can absolutely be drawn out and, you know, drug out just because the authorities don't want to look for them. But he is listed as endangered and missing, so, but not a runaway. He is not listed as a runaway, thankfully. And so over the years, authorities have attempted to re-interview, you know, a few of his friends or anyone that may have saw him that day, students at the school to confirm for sure that he was there, you know, that type of stuff. But they're having trouble actually finding those people because one, so many years have gone by, those adolescents, teenagers, children have all grown up. So they're harder to find. So they're harder to find. So this is how we end up at Christine Green's case. So Christine, oh, let me go back. So the high school that Alan Briscoe Jr. attended was Bartram High School. He was a student there at Bartram High School. It says he was a good student. You know, no one had anything negative to say about him, really. But that is the high school that he attended. I'm not sure if I stated that before. But in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Bartram High School in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So this is how these two missing persons are tied together. So, uh, Alan Barstrom Jr. was last seen on December 13th, 1985, after he attended school at Bartram High School, and then rode the subway, and then caught the city bus home, well headed home, but ended up getting off of his, off of the city bus on Woodland Avenue and it is reported that he was headed to a female friend's home at 16 y'all know what that's like so i'm about to go see me a little boo so i will post alan's picture on the screen right here and i will say that he was last seen wearing a black jacket and blue jeans um, if I can find the photo enhanced composite of what he would look like today, I will absolutely post that to the screen as well. As to Christine Green, also known as Tina or Dinky. She went missing on April 23rd, 1985. Now, Christine was born on March 28th, 1969, so she was 16 at the time of her disappearance, same as Alan. He was also 16 at the time of his, at the time of his disappearance. What links these two cases together is that they both went to Bartram High School. And so whenever you research one case, the, other, the other's name comes up. So as I was researching Alan's case, I kept coming across Christine so that's why I was like okay you know what they're missing from the same area roughly around the same time both went to the same school and they were both the same age so let me just put them both together in one video so anyway on April 23rd 1985 it was just a regular day for Christine she got up got ready for school and caught the bus now <laughs> she catches the bus on Wilden Ave and I know that sounds familiar because Wilden Ave is the last place that Bartram was uh, seen 
Bartram. Bartram is the high school. Woodland Nav is the last place that Alan Briscoe was seen getting off the bus. And Christine gets on the bus at Woodland Avenue. But again, this was eight months prior. So, but anyway, um, Christine, on the other hand, is also listed as an endangered runaway. So she is listed as a runaway, whereas Alan is not listed as a runaway. But it says she may have been pregnant at the time of her disappearance, which may be, this is speculation, which may be why she ran away, so to speak. Her parents, of course, don't agree with that. And her family, of course, doesn't agree with that. But um, police reports say that she is a runaway. So Christine Green, also known as Tina or Dinky, was last seen on April 23rd of 1985. She was wearing a pink blouse, a blue vest, blue jeans, and black shoes. She was last seen leaving her house that morning. We'll get into the nitty gritty of her case in a second, but she was 16 years old. I don't know if I stated that before. So she was last seen leaving her, her family's home on Greenway Avenue. That's where she lives in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And she left her house at eight o'clock that morning, April 23rd, 1985 eight o'clock that morning and she was supposed to catch the bus to school or the trolley is what it says at um that morning to go to Bartram High School and again she was supposed to catch the bus on, and again she was supposed to catch the bus on Woodland Ave so there is speculation that she may have run away because she was pregnant and afraid to tell her family. However, her loved ones have stated that that is just simply not true. And, you know, we don't know as to what's true, what's not. Let me switch brushes because, quite frankly, we don't know. But it says she ran away due to possibly being pregnant. Several of her family members dispute that. And quite frankly, you know, we don't know whether she was or whether she wasn't because we haven't seen or heard from her again. So the police do have her listed as a runaway, an endangered runaway, but she is listed as a runaway. And it says that her loved one stated that she wasn't the type to disappear, go missing, that she always let someone know like where she was going, where she was going to be, that it's completely out of character for her to just disappear, to just go missing without a trace. Like it's not in her character. Forgive me for being out of frame. I can't see and I'm trying to get this design right. But Christine has seven siblings. She is one of eight. I don't know where she falls in that line, but she's one of eight. And it's reported that she had a great relationship with every single one of them. So she didn't go missing because she was tired of being a big sister or a little sister or a middle sister or you know, whatever. Not to mention at the time that she went missing, her mother was bedridden and her mother actually ended up passing away um, six months after her disappearance. So I believe that if she ran away, she would have come back by now, you know? especially with the passing of her mother. 
It says, uh, reports say that Christine did not have a habit of going missing. She did not have a habit of being absent from school. She was a good student, made good grades, you know, a pleasure to have in class, all of that, you know, cliche stuff that people say. Let me take that back. But she was a pleasure to have in class. She was listed as a good student in that. That's a quote, listed as a good student. But I also want to read to you a quote that I found while I was um, researching this case. So I'm researching this case. Well, let me go back. So essentially, Christine was never seen or heard from again. There's not a lot of reports. It doesn't say anyone saw her, you know, people who ride the trolley or conduct the trolley or you know whatever i'm from upstate new york we don't have trolleys we have buses we don't have subways we don't have so i'm not sure exactly how that goes but no one has seen her since she left her home that morning we only know that she was reportedly headed to school to get and to get to school she had to get on the trolley at woodland Ave. so that's essentially all we know did she make it there we don't know um she didn't make it to school so between um, her home in between or you know we don't know if she actually made it onto the trolley at Woodland that part is a mystery Oops. but I wanted to read this quote one of her friends and I'm going to put the quote right on the screen, but I found this while I was doing my research. But um, on April 11th, 2018 is when this was posted and it was written by Monica Martin. Um, and I will post the link to where I got it and everything because I don't want anyone saying that I'm spreading false information. I stumbled upon this and figured that I would share. So on April 11th, 2018, Monica Martin posted and I'm going to read a direct quote. I knew Christine Green. She was my friend. If she was going to run away, she would have told me. She was pregnant by a married man that she babysat for. I know he had something to do with her disappearance. I told the police he denied having relations with her, but I know she cut school to be with him. She had already told him that she was pregnant and keeping the baby. There is not a day that goes by that I don't think about her." End quote. So, with this uh, quote, this was actually a comment on um, one of the sites that I was looking on trying to gather information about um, Christine. And so it said two comments. And you know, I'm reading the comments to see, you know, who said what or, you know, whatever. So I found this. And so she said she did tell the police that um, about this, about her current situation. And I'm assuming that she did because, you know, it does say that she. Sorry, it does say that she is suspected of being pregnant at the time of her disappearance. So I do believe that information may have come from the friend. So I do believe that. However, um, who was this married man? Was he ever interviewed? Um, was he charged with statutory rape? Um, you know, did they ever investigate? him or his wife or you know who was he I, I you know this actually ended up giving me more questions than answers um do we believe this Monica Martin person um there's literally only one time that I that her name comes up as I'm doing this research and it's literally a comment there's a list of missing persons in the Philadelphia area. So Christine is listed as number 18. Alan is listed as number 19. And she says, I knew number 18. <laughs> you know, um, her direct quote says, I knew Christine Green, number 18 on this list. So um, did anyone re-interview her over the years? Did she ever give that married man's name? 
did she know that married man's name? Did the married man, did the married man's wife know? You know, it does go to sh to make you wonder. It's cause for speculation, and all we can do is speculate. Did he know? And did he want to get rid of her? Um, do we have a serial killer on the loose? You know, um, is it just a coincidence that two students went missing from the same school? That's a very good question. Um, they weren't in the same grade, even though they were in the same school. So it's unknown whether or not they knew each other. You know, we don't know. But they did go to the same school. They did essentially catch the same bus. And they went missing eight months away from each other. Christine Green went missing April 23rd, 1985, and Alan Briscoe went missing in December 13th, December 13th, 1985. Same year, same school, same age. Supposedly getting on and getting off the bus on the same street. So, do we have a serial killer? Oh, I don't even want to say that. Do we? Because we don't know if they're dead or alive. But do we have a serial offender on our hands? Um, and I kind of feel like if Christine had not been listed as a runaway, maybe, assuming these are related, maybe... Alan would not have gone missing because the police would have been looking around Woodland Avenue, you know, so it makes you wonder, definitely makes you wonder, but I know that I have been young and pregnant i got pregnant at 17 years old um i never considered running away so i don't know have any information in regards to Alan Briscoe Jr. who went missing on December 13th, 1985 or any information regarding Christine Green who went missing on April 23rd, 
April 23rd, 1985. Both of them were 16 years old. Both of them attended Bartram High School. All the information will be listed down below where you can leave any tips that you may have. And so essentially I'm just gonna box up these nails. Okay, this set is all set and ready to go. I have everything boxed up, bagged up right here. So each set comes with a nail file, nail glue, and a cuticle pusher. But anyway, that concludes this video. If you haven't already, make sure that you subscribe and make sure that you have your notification bell clicked so that you are notified each and every time I upload a video. If you have any information regarding the two missing persons in this case, I will list everything that is needed below on when and where you can report. Again, thank you for watching. Have a good day.